I think that if electric car companies are really smart, Tesla, Xpeng, others, they should hire the students who built this solar and battery powered electric car, which has achieved a truly amazing, an amazing feat. Massive kudos to these students. Here's what they did. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. A student built electric vehicle has won the Australian solar race against global rivals all around the world. This is a global championship. I shouldn't say championship, it's a global competition. And this lightweight vehicle they built called the Sophie 8X used, well, it has a tiny battery. It's not a plug-in hybrid, by the way. It's a fully electric car. It has a 15 kilowatt hour battery and solar roof panels. And it proved that efficiency can beat heavyweight EVs with huge batteries. Sophie X is a student-built solar-powered EV from the Vocational Training Council in Hong Kong, and it claimed victory in the cruiser class of the 2025 World Solar Challenge. The event took competitors on a 3,000 kilometers, which is around 1,864 miles, or exactly 1,864, journey across the Australian outback from Darwin to Adelaide. This area is a desert. There is almost nothing there. Um, it's kind of a, a famous route. When explorers first came to Australia, they tried to actually map out the country and they famously died while trying to um, go, th go through this route. It's, it's very, 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 very filled with nothing, put it that way. Preliminary records show Sophie 8X completed the route in 44 hours, covering 3,021 kilometers or 1,877 miles at an average speed of 68.7 kilometers per hour. That's 42.7 miles an hour. This was a, a really intriguing test because it required engineering skill, but also some really smart racing strategy and renewable energy innovation. The World Solar Challenge is held every two years and it's been held since 1987. It's the ultimate proving ground for solar powered cars. And it combines some pretty wild extreme desert heat and also freezing temperatures during the night too, long distances and unpredictable terrain that needs cars to perform at a very, very high level of efficiency, the kind of efficiency we've just never seen in production electric vehicles. So one of the biggest things you'll see with this competition is how different these student-built EVs are compared to mainstream consumer cars that we drive on the roads today. Many popular electric cars, like the Tesla Model Y, are heavy and energy hungry. Now, I know the Tesla Model Y is one of the most efficient SUVs in the world. It really is. But its efficiency is actually pretty bad in comparison to these vehicles in this test. Now, even though the Model Y weighs only 1,900 kilograms or 4,200 pounds, which is actually less than pretty much all of its rivals in the segment, it actually weighs still more than twice the cruiser class competitors, which are, well, they weigh from 400 to 800 kilos. That's 880 to 1,760 pounds. Now, of course, they're not as big as a Model Y and can't carry five people. But anyway, Sophie X's battery pack is the perfect example of this efficiency-driven design that's needed to actually win this competition. Its 15.2 kilowatt hour battery weighs only 40 kilograms, that's 88 pounds. The Tesla Model Y battery pack, the one with the 62 kilowatt hour battery, it weighs 770 kilos. Now, that's the lithium ion phosphate battery. Of course, the NMC batteries are lighter than that, but there's a pretty big difference in weight, you can see. The Sophie X 8X roof is fitted with six square meters of solar cells, and these keep the battery charged and also power the vehicle at the same time. The team used advanced 400 watt hour per kilogram lithium batteries, conserving weight and space while maintaining energy density. In fact, 
the energy density of these batteries is truly astounding. 400 watt hours per kilogram. I mean, those, that makes these the highest energy density batteries that I've ever seen in any electric vehicle. I'm intrigued to know what these batteries are, and I actually wasn't able to find that out. The Hong Kong team made some major upgrades in their 2025 vehicle design. They collaborated with a Guangdong-based partner to build in-wheel permanent magnet synchronous motors that are 18% lighter than those used in the 2023 version. And I actually did a video recently on these permanent magnet motors that actually go in the wheels, hub, basically hub motors. And the size of these motors now is truly staggering and the power density is remarkable. Some of these motors are literally this big and there's one particular motor that weighs 13 kilograms but has more than 650 horsepower. It's truly staggering. Now, of course, in this test, they don't care about horsepower. This is all about efficiency. The motors are paired with a third generation silicon carbide semiconductor controller, which they say boosts efficiency in energy conversion. Team members said the custom designed SIC or SIC motors can reduce energy consumption by 30% at cruising speeds of 100 kilometers per hour, that's 62 miles an hour, and that gave them an edge on the open stretches of freeway road where efficiency is incredibly important. Aerodynamics as well play a massive role in getting your vehicle to be efficient. The lightweight carbon body was shaped with the help of computational fluid dynamics modeling to minimize drag. The team built weather and road condition models to better optimize energy usage and actually plan out their strategy. In fact, I believe they used AI to plan their strategy out, which was quite smart. These improvements paid off in a close race to the finish line. The Sophie X crossed the, the line first, 8X, followed just four minutes later by Estonia's Solaride 3 Enefit. Italy's Onda Soler from the University of Bologna trailed in third place, while Taiwan's Apollo IX Plus and Australia's Sunswift team pushed to finish before the evening cutoff. So can this technology actually play a part in the future of electric cars? Well, absolutely. I mean, I actually test drove one of the, one of the most revolutionary vehicles in the world, which is the Aptera Motors, their actual three-wheeled solar-powered EV. And it's interesting because when you drive it out of the factory, obviously there's no sun inside the factory. The second it gets outside and the sun starts hitting those solar panels, you can instantly see that it starts to actually use that solar. It starts to use that solar to, to charge the battery and to actually push the vehicle. It's quite incredible. I personally don't see why all EVs can't eventually have this tech. I think eventually this technology will be a, a mainstream feature. And I know a lot of people believe this isn't the case, but that's because they're basing it on today's tech. The technology that they were using in this test to run these electric cars to get this kind of staggering efficiency that they got was truly remarkable. And we're talking about efficiency that is literally 90% better than current cars today. And the biggest reason they were able to achieve that is simply by having solar panels on the roof that are integrated into the battery's drivetrain. Meaning, even when the vehicles are driving, they're soaking up that electric, that solar, that solar power, and that's actually enabling the vehicle to go. Now, of course, it can't just run on sun alone, these vehicles. They need battery power as well. But still, it provides a huge edge. And as we see, solar panels become more energy dense and they're, they're getting better and better. Every year, solar panels become more powerful. It can soak up more electricity in the same amount of space. As that happens, and we see controllers and integration of these solar panels getting better, I think we're going to see things like Mercedes-Benz's solar paint become a very, very popular option for buyers. And I just don't see why you would want solar paint on your car if it's going to give you an average of maybe 30 to 40 miles of free electricity every day. The average person that lives in a city worldwide only drives 30 to 40 miles a day. So you could, in theory, drive for free every day on average if you were to have this built into every panel on your car. And I don't see why not. Yes, it's going to take a few years. It's going to take some evolution of this technology. But eventually, I think it will happen. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching.